Hi JNM here with a new Blender tutorial. I use Blender 2.82 and I give you some tips here for hard surface sculpting. So let's start with an empty project and I add a new object, a UV sphere. I tap into edit mode, then I press the R key followed by Y and rotate the sphere 90 degrees, so I type in 90. And then I press Ctrl and tap and switch to sculpt mode. Ok, we can't see all the brushes, so I drag this a bit to the right. And then I select the brush Box Mask. I have Symmetry enabled for the x-axis, so when I mask a part on the left side, it will be masked on the other side as well. I extend it a bit and then I go ahead and select the Mesh filter. The brush has several filter types. And I want to scale down the part that is not masked, so I select the Scale Filter type. And then I click into the viewport with the left mouse button and drag to the left. And this means I'm scaling this part down. When I drag to the right instead, I increase the scale. Ok, now I switch to the Relax Filter option. And this is normally used for other use cases to relax the topology, but I can use this as well to enlarge the part in the middle. I just try out these new features to get a feeling how they work. Ok, you see this is very low poly still, so I go to edit mode and select this edge and press Ctrl and B to add a bevel, just to add a few more segments here. And I know that a mesh like this can be created in a much more simple way. But I wanted to play around with the box mask and the mesh filter also for low poly meshes. Ok, I want the edges to be a bit more crisp. So go to edit mode and select them. Ok, and then I press Ctrl and B to add some bevels. Alright, now I want to turn this into a smooth high poly mesh. So I switch to object mode and add a subdivision surface modifier. Ok, I think three subdivisions are enough. Then I apply the modifier and go to edit mode and you can see that's a quite dense mesh. But in order to add details in sculpt mode I have to remesh it to get a higher resolution. For this we use the new remesher. I set a voxel size to 0.006 which is quite high and press remesh. And look at this, this is real time. It's a pretty fast remesh and we have some small artifacts here at the center of the sphere. But we can use the mesh filter and the smooth filter type to get rid of these artifacts. So I select it and drag to the right and the whole object is smoothed. You can compare it perhaps a bit to the polish by features which is a ZBrush tool, perhaps you know it. Oh I see I don't have the screencast keys activated so I go ahead and activate it so that you can see which keys I'm pressing. And what I want to do now is I want to cut away some parts from the left and the right side. And this can be done by using the box mask. I activate it by pressing the B key. And with the few snapped I add a mask. It is also applied to the right side because I have symmetry for the X axis enabled. And now I open the menu mask and choose mask slice to new object. You can also slice without creating a new object but filling the holes or you can slice without filling the holes. Ok, you can see these masked parts are turned into new objects and we are sent to object mode after the operation. I don't need these parts so I remove them. And then I select the main object and go back to sculpt mode. This part here at the outside looks really crisp but it has a very low amount of polygons. When you switch to edit mode you can see it. But I need more polys to continue my sculpting. And this is why I have to remesh it again. I enable here the wireframe display so that you can also see the wireframe in sculpt mode. And after I remeshed it, the geometry is really dense. Ok, let's continue. What I want to add are some kind of holes at the outsides of the object. For example, six symmetrical holes, so I activate the mask brush, go to symmetry, I keep the mirror for the x-axis enabled, because I want to add the holes on the left and on the right side, and the radial x symmetry are set to 6. Alright, when I paint now the mask onto the mesh it is too blurry, so I press F to decrease the size of the brush. 
like so, and then Shift and F to increase the strength. Ok, I now can click a few times to add 6 symmetrical circles. Cool, and they are added on the other side as well. I want to move these parts into the mesh, so I press Ctrl and I to invert the mask. I now could use the move tool to move these parts into the mesh, but I like to try the mesh filter and use the inflate filter type. And when I drag to the left, it turns the inflate to a deflate. And this is exactly what I was going for. Ok, Alt and M to get rid of the mask. And it looks nice already, but the parts are a bit edgy. So I do a remesh, but I still want the edges to be a bit more smooth. But I don't want to smooth the whole object. Because I want to keep the other edges as they are, so I select the mask brush again. And paint a mask onto the holes that I added. Because these are the parts that I want to be smooth. So the same trick, I press Ctrl and I to invert the mask. Then select the mesh filter. The filter type I set to smooth and then I drag to the right. And perhaps it's a bit hard to see for you, but the edges look really smooth now. And again, I press Alt and M to get rid of the mask. And here you can see we have these holes on the left and the right side. Ok, next part. I want these edges here to be scraped and crisp. To do this, I select the scrape brush. And you can try now with the symmetry enabled to apply this to the edge. But it is really hard, if not impossible, to add this with this kind of stroke. So I change the stroke to line. And then I paint a line along the edge. Still with the radial axis symmetry enabled. And this is the result, a scraped, clean edge. Of course you can do this for other brushes as well, for example the grease brush. Here without the line stroke, which can be quite useful in some cases, but for this particular model I use the line stroke. Ok, I also want to add a part at the bottom and the top, on the left and also on the right side, so I enable X and Z symmetry and then mask this part using the box mask. And the mask is applied on the top and the bottom, also on the other side. Again, I press Ctrl and I to invert the mask and then I move out these parts and bring them a bit to the inside. It's very simple to do using the move tool. The only drawback is that we have some artifacts on the sides. Here you can see it, it doesn't look too clean, but I will show you how to get rid of this. First of all I go to the remesher and remesh, so that I have a dense mesh for all parts of the geometry. And the parts which look dirty I want to smooth, so I use again the mask brush to add a mask to these parts. Like so, still the symmetry is enabled, which makes it really comfortable to draw this mask. And once I'm finished, I invert the mask again, select the mesh filter, filter type smooth, and drag to the right to smooth. And that looks better, of course you can go ahead now and manually smooth out some parts, some artifacts by pressing the shift key which enables the smooth brush. Ok, remesh again and here we go. The last thing that I want to show you is adding some details to the mesh. Be sure to have X and Z symmetry enabled and then align the view so that you have a kind of perpendicular look onto the surface to which you want to add the detail, which is a bit quick and dirty, I'll show you a better way in a moment. Then select the grease brush and set the strength to 1. The stroke is still set to line and then just draw some lines onto the mesh. Ok, that's it, pretty simple. The last thing that I want to show you is how to use alphas. 
I do this using the draw brush. I increase the strength and also the value of the auto smooth. The stroke I change from line to drag dot and then I go to the texture menu and set the mapping to area plane. That's a clean solution if you want to paint in details perpendicular to the surface. After that I add a new texture and call it ring and go to the texture panel to open a black and white image. It's a white circle on a black background. Here I open it in Photoshop. I added a bit of blur to the ring. You don't need Photoshop to create it, you can use Krita as well or GIMP. And when you press the F key to change the size of your brush, you can see the alpha. And when I press the left mouse button, I can drag it over the holes, because we set the stroke to drag dot. And with this brush you can create now nice looking borders for the holes. Ok, great, of course you can also invert the brush by pressing the Ctrl key and then add the inverted detail like this. So guys, I hope this tutorial was interesting for you. If it was, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel, to JNM, if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, then add these to the comments. I will try to answer these as best as I can and as soon as possible. Perhaps you would like to be my patron, this would really help. Thanks for this. Thanks for watching guys and I see you soon in the next one.